verses 1 through 12. I want you to listen to this reading attentively. It was already found. Good. Say that again. It was already found. Good. Chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. And at that time Herod the Terarch announced Tetrarch, heard the reports about Jesus. And he said to his attendants, This is John the Baptist. He has risen from the dead. That is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Now Herod, uh, now Herod had arrested John and bound him and put him in prison because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. For John had been saying to him, it is, not, it is not lawful for you to have her. Herod wanted to kill John, but he was afraid of the people because they considered John a prophet. On Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced for the guests and pleased Herod so much that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed because of his oaths and his dinner guests. He ordered that her request be granted, and he and had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl who carried it to her mother. John's disciples came and took his body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. Amen. Amen. And let's add Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Verses 17, 18, and 19. Chapter 6, verse 17. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which endureth into that which is with the veil. Amen. 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 One of the saddest stories in the Bible. Now look at me so you understand what God wants to communicate to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. One of the saddest stories in the Bible is the way John the Baptist died. He was highly anointed. One of the most anointed men of God who ever lived. He had his church in the wilderness. Yet people would go and listen to him. He wouldn't let his church be in a strategically place where people can easily come. He, he was... Mm -hmm. He was in a thick forest. Yet people would go to him and they received from him. He did so very well. God used him to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedience of the wisdom to the just and made ready for the Lord a people's prepared. Unfortunately for John the Baptist, his death is not too good a beautiful story to write to him about. This is what happened. Harold had a party for his daughter. Herodias daughter and the, the girl's mother and John the Baptist 
were not in good terms because Herod took his brother Philip's wife. His own brother, he took his wife. And John, nobody could criticize him because remember, those places, the kings were called Oriental Despots. Oriental Despotism is the system where the king can claim the properties of his subjects, their wives, their children, even make them heroes, heroes of food and drawers of water, and nobody could challenge him. But you see, John the Baptist realized it was not good for you to take your brother's wife. So John the Baptist seriously preached against the king. According to the story, the king wanted to kill John because he said, how dare you preach against me? But then he was scared of John. He knew John was a prophet, a highly anointed prophet. So he wouldn't kill John. So he imprisoned John the Baptist. But then it was this occasion where the young girl had her birthday party. And there were several people around, important, prominent people in the king's government were all assembled. Listen to this. Then the daughter was dancing. She danced beautifully. The king said, wow. Then the king said, because you have done so, danced so very good, ask me anything at all that you want. When you ask, I will give it to you. But the mistake the king made is that he swore an oath. And he did that in the presence of the party guests. So quickly the girl went to her mother and said, the king says anything I ask him, he's going to give it to me. Then the girl asked, told the mother that the king even swore an oath in the presence of the party guests. The mother asked the daughter, are you sure he swore an oath? The daughter said, yes. Then the mother said, in the presence of the party guest, the girl said, yes. Then the mother said, quickly go back and tell him you want the head of John the Baptist in a plate. So the girl went to the father, the king, and said, I want John the Baptist's head in a plate. Remember when the king arrested John the Baptist, he was scared of John. He didn't want to kill John because he knew John was a prophet. That's why he imprisoned John. But because he swore an oath in the presence of the party guest, he had no choice. Because the king could never go against his word. More importantly, when it is back with an oath. Is somebody understanding me? So he asked his executors to go and execute John. John chopped off his head put the head in a plate, and brought it to the girl. The girl couldn't even do anything with it. The reason why the king killed John the Baptist is mainly because he swore an oath in the presence of the party guests. And that's why I love us to relate it to Hebrews chapter 6. Because in Hebrews chapter 6, when you read, it said that God was going to bless Abraham. And then, you see, when you swear, you have to swear by something greater than yourself. But then God looked around, there was nothing greater than his name. So he swore by his name, that in blessing, he will bless Abraham. And in establishing, he will establish him. Verse number 18, it says, by two immutable things, in which it is impossible for God to lie. What are the two immutable things? Number one. God swore to Abraham an oath. That's number one. Number two, God did that in the presence of the party guests. Who are the party guests? In heaven, we have the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which is registered in heaven. In heaven, we have the spirit of just men made perfect. In heaven, we have the innumerable company of angels. These are the party guests. Also, the party guests in heaven, we can include the host of hell. They had God promising Abraham. So check this out. If even a human king could not go against his word because he sworn an oath and because of the presence of the party guests, how much more almighty God, 
How much more do you think he'll go against his word when he's sworn an oath in the presence of the party guests? And this one that God wants me to share with you today. When God said he'll bless you, it came with an oath. That's what the 17 tells us. Every single thing that God has said concerning your life is documented in the Bible. And it is back with an oath from Almighty God. Not only that, when God gave his word, the host of heaven, they had him. The demons of hell, they had him as well. So I want you to understand that that is why Father God can never change his mind concerning you. Probably his promises for your life is delaying. Delayance is not the same as deniance. Waiting on God is not wasting time. So if anything God has said concerning your life is not coming to pass, it's not because he's forgetting you. He will never turn his back on you. Why will he not turn his back on you? He's so faithful. And he's sworn an oath in the presence of the party guests and with back with an oath and he'll make sure every single thing he has said concerning your life will come to pass. Herod was a powerful, mighty king. But then, when he arrested John, he couldn't kill John because he was scared of John himself. But then the opportunity came, the occasion came, he couldn't help it. He couldn't help it because he made an oath in the presence of the people. So the people were going to see whether the king is going to go by his word or not. And I want to encourage you, church, if a human king could not go against his word because of an oath, how much more do you think Father God will go against his word concerning your life? What is the thing that he has said concerning you? Jeremiah chapter 11, verse number 29. He says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. They are thoughts of good, thoughts of good, and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Another version says to give you a future and a hope. Chapter 112, verse 15, Psalms. It says, God is mindful of you. Mindful comes from two words put together mind and then full. It means that His mind is full of you. It's full of you. So every single thing he has said concerning you, he will ensure it will come to pass. And this is what I want to encourage you with. This is what I want to tell you with. What do you think the king gained when he executed John the Baptist? He wanted people to know that he's a man of integrity. Even a human being. He wanted people to know that he always says, he always do what he has said. If even a human being could do this, how much more the God of heaven? Maybe you look at your life and December is coming to an end. 2012 is coming to an end. And it is not like the way you anticipated when you were starting 2012 because you had several resolutions. You prayed over them. You trusted God over them. And it's like they are not coming to pass for you. I want you to understand that God had you when he made those resolutions. Even putting those resolutions aside, he has awesome, better, fantastic plans for your life. And all these plans he has for you, they are back with oath. And when he made those oaths, the host of heaven, the party guests, they had him. So he will never go against his way. That's why he can never fail you. I'm sure in heaven there will be no dictionary. There will be no thesaurus. But should there be a dictionary in heaven, two words can never be found in them. I'm certain about it. Number one, failure. Because God doesn't fail. So he doesn't need to have failure in his vocabulary in heaven. Number two, disappointment. He will never disappoint you. Hallelujah. So I want you to lift up your head. I want you to believe that faithful is he who has saved you. And he will also do it. You think you always come and serve him, he doesn't see. You think you always wake up every morning, you go up and down, try to live a life that is worthy of emulation, he doesn't see. 
You think you cry every day, every time he doesn't hear, he does. If he is not responding, it is because he has a better plan for you. We were coming to church this evening and Hillary told me, Daddy, I want lollipop. I said no. And she squeezed her face. She was going to cry. I was not going to move by her cry because I realized she didn't need the lollipop at that time. At the right time, she will have lollipop or even something better. That's the same way Father God deals with us. He will not give it to you because you ask. You see, charismatic Pentecostal Christianity has not helped us. Because they've taught us that everything you believe God by faith when you pray, you get it. It doesn't work like that. God answers your prayer based on His will for your life. And His will for your life is awesome. His will for your life is excellent. His will for your life is perfect. His will for your life is great. So sometimes you might ask Him something and He will not give it to you at a time you expect Him. But He has never ever been late. Never been late. And that's what I want you to understand. For instance, he gave Joseph an awesome revelation. Joseph had a dream. And in the dream, his whole family were bowing down to him. That was the interpretation he had from his father. The whole family bowed down to him. But instead of the family bowing to him, he realized that he, was, he found himself in the pits. In the pits. Because the family put him in the pits. But that was not part of the dream, the revelation God gave to him. Sometimes God will tell you something, you wake up and you see something different. God will prophesy to you, let somebody prophesy to you about something good that is going to come your way. But then you will see problems, you will see difficulties, you will see challenges. That's exactly where Joseph found himself, in the pits. But God didn't tell him he would be in the pits. All that God told him is that you are going to rule and reign. Your family will bow before you. But then he was in the pits. And as if there was no hope, they brought him from the pit and they sold him to some Midianites. The Midianites also sold him to Egypt, some Egyptians. And he found himself in Africa, a place he has never been there before, as a slave. And when he was in Potiphar's house and he found favor before the general and his lightings were slowly working for him, but the first wife lied against him seriously. There was no jury to listen, to deliberate on his issue. There was no lawyer to defend him. He was pushed into prison. For two years, Joseph was kept in prison. But when God gave him the revelation, God did not tell him all these challenges, all these problems is going to come his way. Church, let me tell you this. The first time I was coming to the United States, right, I was so excited. Because Big Bob, the dream of everybody from my part of the world is to come to the U.S. But listen to this. When I was coming, somewhere the plane went so very high, deep within the cloud. And the, the plane started shaking heavily. Heavily, I was scared. <laughs> but the good thing is, that was not my destination. I knew it was going to be temporarily. My destination was JFK. So although the plane was shaking, although I was going through difficulties, it was a temporary thing. It was a short time. It was never going to be forever. And then eventually I landed into my destination. I want you to understand, from the time God gave you the promise to your destination, there will be challenges. There will be problems. But that is not your destination. So look onto your destination. What is the destination God has for you? Jeremiah chapter 29, verse number 11. He says he knows the thoughts that he has towards you. They are thought of good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. So if maybe today you are jobless, understand that that is not your destination. It is just a transition. If today that man or that woman is not treating you good, it is just a transition. It is not a destination. 
If today things are not going the way you are expecting, it is just a transition. It is not a destination. Is somebody understanding me? When you understand this, it solves a lot of problems. A lot of problems. Eventually, Joseph found himself in that situation where God promised him. When his father died, his brothers were scared to death. They went to Joseph and said, Joseph, please, father is dead. When father was alive, you promised us that you'd never pay us back. Forgive us, Joseph. Even after several years, their conscience was condemning them. Joseph told them, no, I've forgiven you. You meant it for bad. But God turned it out for good. I want you to understand. The people who don't like you, the situations that are not working in your favor now, eventually all will come together. And then you understand why Father God allowed those things to take place. Is somebody understanding me? So if today maybe job-wise things are not working for you, that person who works for you is not treating you good. If maybe that supervisor is not relating to you very nice. If that co-worker is not treating you good. If your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, that man, that person is not treating you good. That situation is not working in your favor. You may not understand it now, but eventually they will all come together. They will all come together because Father God is in control. That's what I want you to understand. Each one of us, our lives is like a remote control in the hands of Almighty God. Not only our lives, everything that takes place in this world is like remote control. Just as you can use your remote control to change the channel at will, the same way Father God changes the times and the seasons at will. Because He's sovereign. He does what pleases Him. And one of the things that you do to please Him is to ensure that you receive the expected end. The challenges and the problems you're going through today, one day you are going to see a young lady, a young man who is also going through the same situation. That is when your experience comes in. Because it is said that experience is the best teacher. When you see somebody going through that, because you have been there before, you become empathetic towards that person. You have empathy for that person. But if you have not been there before and somebody is going through, you don't even feel it. Because you've not been there before. But because you've been there before, you know how it is. Is somebody understanding me? So the things that you are going through, it is even beyond you. It is bigger than you. And that's what I want you to understand. Whereas you think about yourself, God is thinking about even the generations yet unborn. And that's the message God wants me to communicate to you. He has sworn an oath in the presence of the party guests. And that is why he will never let you down. And that is why you ensure that every single thing you have said concerning your life will come to pass. Amen. Amen. So anytime things are not working for you, anytime you are going through challenges and difficulties, anytime you are going through frustration, remember that there are several promises in the Bible concerning your life. When God made those promises, remember it is back with an oath. Mm -hmm. And the oath is supported by the presence of the party guests. And that is why he will never let you down. Always understand that. If a human king could not disappoint his daughter because of an oath, how much more the God of heaven, the possessor of the heavens and the earth. And this is what I want us to understand. And this is what I want to share with each one of us. So we are going to deliberate on it. We are going to discuss it further. Contribution from each person. And then we end. Amen. Amen.